What if I told you beauty was determined by the diet your ancestors followed, even whether you were breastfed or not? That the presence of meat and animal foods in our diets is the single most important thing contributing to every aspect of physical development. Whether it's your facial structure, not having to wear glasses, not having crooked teeth, your height, every single aspect of human beings is determined by diet environmental factors. This was noted first by Dr. Weston Price, a dentist in the early 1900s who went around examining indigenous groups. Uh, groups of native people subsisting on essentially a caveman diet. He inspected these people for cavities and he noticed they didn't suffer from cavities. And not only did they not suffer from cavities, they were also absent of degenerative disease, heart disease, diabetes, cancer. These people seem to be immune to everything plaguing the modern world. But when modern foods refined flour, canned foods, jams, seed oils, aka vegetable oils, were introduced into these indigenous people's diets, they started suffering the same problems. And cavities were an incredibly big deal back then. Uh, if you were to get a cavity, it's almost a death sentence if it turns into an abscess. How painful it is, how infected it can get uh, in these indigenous people that didn't have access to modern medicine. Uh, it's pretty safe to say that cavities are not natural. Uh, although dental plaque buildup might be natural, which these people had, they didn't suffer from cavities. Dr. Weston Price observed all of these people to be beautiful, tall, strong in stature. And what determined the person's skin color, specific height, physical appearance, can really only be attributed to the variance in diet and climate, temperature, in relation to these indigenous groups. The reason South Sea Islanders look like they do is because they live in that specific part of the world and follow that specific diet and those external factors determine their genetic makeup and what they ultimately look like. The Australian Aborigines, the Native Americans, Italians, Dutch people, every single group of people on this planet, the way they look, the differences between us, has been determined by our environmental factors over thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This is every single thing. How much hair you have on your face, your facial structure, um, what hair you tend to have, what color it is, every little thing. And then these gene variations of blue eyes and mutations might have occurred because of certain environmental factors. And one big thing here, you know, the reason women are attracted to men over a certain height is specifically because in nature, men shorter than six foot, six foot one, didn't seem to exist in these indigenous tribes. If they were given a proper diet, the men would always be six foot tall or over. So I think there's a tie in there. And of course, the reason that you know, men are attracted to women regardless of their height. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we know the reason for that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, some guys I know, doesn't matter as long as it has two holes, it's good to go. And of course, there's some biological stuff related there. You know, if a man was on his own and hunting, he could procure calories for himself. But a woman in the past might not have been as capable of hunting or obtaining calories as a man was. So women would have depended on men to get a large portion of their animal nutrition in some cases. And our stature didn't start decreasing until we started consuming grains. Not only did our stature start decreasing, our brain size also started decreasing. You know, our ancestors used to actually have bigger brains than us. Although a bigger brain isn't necessarily a determining factor for IQ, it's definitely worth noting as a bigger brain means more physical functions in the body. Uh, having a bigger brain means you're going to have better eyesight, better sense of smell, better sense of taste. Every aspect of your physical being is determined by your brain size. It's the reason carnivorous animals don't have as much intelligence as we do. It's the ratio of brain size to body size as well as muscle size. These carnivores are, you know, 
10 to hundreds of times stronger than we are, but through our intelligence and tool usage, we make up for our lack of muscle mass. Now, here I have a picture of my great grandfather. And although he was shorter than me, likely due to lack of animal foods in the Italian diet, he had a much wider jaw than me and better developed lips, likely due to being breastfed at a young age. When you think someone is short with a blocky head like some of us Italians tend to be, keep in mind, it's not actually the person having a big head, although you could say that, it's because their body didn't fully develop. Our heads are as big as they are supposed to be to accommodate the facial structure, the brain size, everything. But our bodies didn't have enough nutrition during key developmental stages of life. And when we talk about this nutrition during developmental stages of life, we mean everything from the health of the sperm and the egg during contraception, the health of the mother's diet during breastfeeding, the child's diet during childhood, teenage years, until you're in your early 20s, it's important to have a high amount of your calories from animal foods because these fat-soluble vitamins are key determining factors in our growth. And as silly as it sounds to say, oh, the reason someone looks like they have a big nose or big ears is because they didn't get enough vitamins in their diet, it's actually the truth. And I'm sure a lot of these diet and external factors can lead to hormone imbalances that might also cause unusual soft tissue development. By soft tissue development, we mean nose or anything that has to do with the face. So it's not necessarily that the person has a big nose, that has big ears, has a long chin. It's that their face is not wide enough, not big enough to accommodate that feature as it's supposed to be. This is also painfully apparent when you compare a country like the Netherlands to Italy. Why don't people think, hey, why are Dutch people so tall? They're 6'3 on average. It's crazy. The men in the Netherlands are literally like 6'2, 6'3 average, and poor old Frankie boy is standing here at 5'8. And I'm the tallest person. I'm the tallest person out of all my relatives at 5'8. And I'm not even 5'8. I'm like 5'7 and 3 quarters, and I'm still taller. <laughs> is, you know, what are you going to do? But hey, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take looking like a short, pretty guy over, you know, some tall Dutch ogre any day. Uh, but outside of that, the Dutch people consume an incredible amount of dairy products, of cheese. You can correlate the amount of animal foods in a person's diet directly to their height. It didn't matter where the animal food comes from. It's the presence of these fat-soluble vitamins, these animal foods in them. And in order for an animal food to contain these fat-soluble vitamins, it has to be of indigenous quality. You know, our modern grain-fed meat, conventional dairy, farm-raised fish, these foods don't actually have the fat-soluble vitamins I'm referring to. If you look at tribesmen like the Maasai, cattle herders who subsisted mostly off of blood, meat, and milk, they are some of the tallest, most physically impressive people to ever roam this planet. Now you boys might be thinking, Frankie, why is your head so small? Why aren't you walking around like Mr. Potato Head with a block on your shoulders? It's because I did not develop properly. Although, I'm incredibly thankful for, you know, how I look, my intelligence. I did have jaw surgery twice, and I am a unique circumstance. I'm a triplet via in vitro fertilization, which is, I mean, incredibly unnatural to say the least. And I, I think it's safe to say, I'm not even sure if triplets would be possible in nature. It puts an incredible, unrealistic, something you cannot meet, nutritional stress on the mother. The fact that me, my brother, and my sister were even all alive is a testament. Unfortunately, my sister is not 100% mentally. Uh, she is disabled, but I'll, I'll save that for a different video. The reason lack of these nutrients causes issues in physical development is because every cell in your body requires vitamins and minerals to function. Vitamin D3, for example, mobilizes calcium into the bones. If you don't have vitamin D3 in your diet, it greatly impairs your ability to essentially get taller. Uh, same thing with vitamin K2, which is specifically found in animal foods and fermented foods. K2 binds to calcium in the bloodstream via a specific protein molecule and actually brings it into organ tissues and cells, allowing them to use calcium. 
Uh, there's also vitamin A, retinol in the animal form that's used to regulate gene expression and cell differentiation. When you look at all of these fat soluble vitamins and even water soluble vitamins, vitamin B12, omega fatty acids, even the antioxidants, vitamin E, vitamin C, every single vitamin and almost a lot of the minerals can regulate gene expression. Gene expression turns on and off genes in your body to dictate cell processes. And there's nothing higher than that in nutrition that's more important for consuming something. People drinking apple cider vinegar, paprika, I don't know what they're drinking now, shots in the morning, a little bit far away from what I'm talking about here. So you don't get these nutrients, your skull doesn't develop properly. Pretty simple concept. Now, I know some of you orthotropics guys are watching, some of you Mike Mew bros. You guys are correct to some degree. Tongue posture and facial form does impact development, but it is not even close to the sole determining factor. Uh, for someone to think that chewing and f tongue posture is going to affect their skull and the rest of their face, their orbital bones and everything, it is, is far from realistic. But to explain why this happens, now as you can imagine, if the skull doesn't develop properly, it can't accommodate the tongue muscle and the soft tissues. Uh, the tongue is supposed to fit in your mouth in a certain way, but if the bones didn't form properly, the tongue can't really fit in your mouth in a certain way. So that tongue posture does have an effect after early developmental stages in contributing to poor lower facial posture. What I'm getting at is, if you have an adequately nutritionally complete diet, your bones will develop properly, you will have proper tongue posture as a result of that, and this will be a non-issue. This has nothing to do with chewing or any of that because there are indigenous groups of people, especially First Nation Alaskan Inuits, that didn't chew at all. They just swallowed their food and they still had perfect facial structure. There are babies that are born with drastically different variances in facial width. So the nutrient content of the diet determines your overall facial development, but improper tongue posture can make the lower face drastically worse, depending on what it is. The tongue is supposed to rest at the top of your mouth. Uh, the best way to describe it is smile and swallow. That's where your tongue is supposed to be. Also, if you say the word and that's where your tongue is supposed to be as well. If you guys want to look into mewing, if you want me to do a video on mewing and the importance of chewing and facial posture, I can do one. It's definitely important and it's definitely something we should be correcting, but it doesn't make us beautiful. It's something that can be used to fix past problems as we don't have a time machine. Now, of course, the first thing people respond to this is genetics. And genetics takes the blame for everything, but if vitamin and mineral intake literally determines our genes, okay, so I'm right then, right? People would be inclined to say, oh, well, Native Americans, First Nation Alaskans, indigenous aborigines, Nur tribesmen, literally, they'll literally say every single indigenous group has a wider face because of genetics. And I'm like, okay, well, you don't think that the reason those indigenous groups had wider faces was because they are on their natural diets and their faces develop properly? Is that not a plausible theory? I, it makes a lot more sense than what you're saying. All humans are meant to look similar in this context. Broad, wide faces, symmetrical lips, tall, impressive physical stature. And when I mentioned the vitamin D3 earlier, there's also other things associated with this. Not only height, not only physical stature. Vitamin D3 is greatly associated with birth weight, pubertal timing, adult body size, educational attainment. And this chart shows height correlating strongly with the sunnier summer months by a significant margin. Taylor Howard, Cindy Mello, Sarah Sampaio, Elizabeth Sawatsky. And for those of you guys saying, oh Frank, those girls had lip fillers, they all had surgery, how can you not see that? Guys, you're like those genetic people that, okay yeah, maybe some of these girls do get lip fillers, but lip fillers do not make your lips whiter and more symmetrical lip fillers are usually incredibly obvious. And these women, and these indigenous, did these indigenous people have lip fillers? Did those Inuit Alaskan pictures I showed you, did those people have lip fillers? 
What you'll notice in all of these models is similar facial features in regards to their symmetrical development. And their faces might not be as wide as our indigenous ancestors. And due to modern attractiveness standards, some people might not even find these people attractive. I personally think they are beautiful and what we are meant to look like. Now, one other interesting thing is the strength of the jaw and the teeth. It really is a sight to behold in some cases. And there are even modern examples of this. Uh, I remember seeing Haley Baldwin. You are the coolest person. Now, Haley Baldwin is a beautiful young lady, and although I would say her face is properly developed to some degree, yeah, I mean, there's always room for improvement. Uh, like the faces now are narrower, although you can see, okay, she has symmetrical lips. She has a mouth wide enough to accommodate all of the teeth. Haley Baldwin has proper facial development, but you know, what degree of facial development these people receive correlates with the amount of animal nutrition. One thing that really convinced me of this is the eyesight of Australian Aborigines. And they were said to be used in naval warfare because they could see ships from miles away. Some of these indigenous groups had records of planets and knowledge of things that we could only see with a telescope. They had incredibly impressive eyesight. Uh, when I was bartending at a restaurant, um, I think this was a cocktail bar uh, that I was part of the opening team in like uh, 2017 summer, uh, there was a Samoan chef and this guy could smell what someone ate for lunch if they walked past him. And that's what our sense of smell is supposed to be. I mean, I'm very jealous of that sense of smell because I'm involved in, in culinary and stuff. And, you know, my lack of sense of smell and taste. And, you know, I had LASIK eye surgery, guys. I had double jaw surgery. I had braces twice. I had to fix everything. And I'm still not nearly where I'm supposed to be. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, I am super fortunate to only have a lack of a sense of smell and taste, although in my professional career it has been detrimental. You know, I'll never be a sommelier, I'll never be able to smell and taste wine, do stuff like that. But in the big picture, getting people back to our physical impressiveness is, this is the purpose of my YouTube channel. Th this conversation I'm having here is, you know, really what the end goal is. Everyone being physically perfect, happy and healthy and functional. So how far are we from optimal health? There was a study called the Pottinger Cat Study. And, you know, they fed one group of cats like raw meat and raw milk, one group of cats cooked meat. And, and basically, the cats who ate the raw meat and the raw animal products were fine, but the cats who ate the cooked meat actually became infertile and sterile and essentially went extinct. Uh, and when, when I talk about, like, people on a vegan diet going extinct, I mean it. A vegan diet will make you infertile, and humans would go extinct on a vegan diet. Uh, this Pottinger cat study really states how many generations it takes to get back to normal. And we know that if, you know, two parents who are short bring a child to America, usually they tend to be taller. So we know that diet can play a huge factor in just one generation. And we know that people can become much taller in just one generation of a higher animal food diet. What I'm thinking more along the lines of is how many generations would it take us to get back to our brain size, you know, pre Neolithic revolution, pre agriculture. That to me is really interesting. Uh, in a video I did like two or three weeks ago, uh, on fish is a double-edged sword, uh, there's this documentary called Norwegian Salmon, World's Most Toxic Food. And in this documentary, cod mutated because of what they were feeding it to have its mouth stuck open. And it took eight generations to get back to normal. So yeah, we're, we're pretty far off here, but uh, you know, this, even although I don't think it's ever going to happen, starting now would certainly be a good step in the right direction. And of course, you know, in the future, if Frankie Boy is fortunate enough to have his own children, you guys thought Frankie Boy was pretty. We'll see what happens. So thank you guys for watching. 
please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, share the video. If you guys would like to support me, just check out some of the other videos on my channel. I'm going to actually link three videos uh, at the end here that I made on this topic very similarly in the past. This is kind of an accumulation of all of those ideas meshed into one and hopefully develops a broader understanding of this topic. This is something that I like addressing constantly as it's something that is very important to people and falls in line with my message perfectly. You guys enjoy the rest of your week.